Thank you for tuning into Literary Blend, a publishing podcast. I'm your host, Demi Michelle Schwartz. There's no perfect recipe for chasing a dream in the publishing industry, but I hope the conversations on this show give you the ingredients you need to bake yours into reality. So let's flip the page and get into this chapter of Literary Blend. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Literary Blend. Today's chapter is called Committing to Writing a Novel. And joining me on the show to cover this topic is an author I'm so excited to chat with. Please welcome Bruce Buchanan. Hey, Bruce. Hello. How are you today? I'm fantastic. How are you? Doing great. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to chat with you today. But before we get into our conversation on committing to writing a novel, I would love for you to share a little about yourself and your journey as an author so far. All right. Well, so far, uh, it's been a, a long journey, but uh, but but a good one. Um, I uh, a YA fantasy author. Uh, I, my uh, debut novel, uh, The Blacksmith Boy, comes out next year from Wild Ink Publishing. Um, it's something I've, you know, and we'll get into this during the show, I'm sure, but uh, it's been, I've been working on for a, a while, but uh, I finally was able to uh, to commit to writing it, and uh, I'm so glad that I did. Uh, you know, it's the, writing a novel is something I've wanted to do since I was 14 years old. I remember I went to a young writer's camp, and uh, uh, that's when I first got the idea that, hey, I would like to write my own novel someday. And uh, it's taken me, taken me a long time to get there, but I, I can finally say that, that I've done it. So That is fantastic. And I was so excited when I saw your book deal with Wild Ink. Congratulations on that. Well, thank you so much. They, they are a wonderful uh, publisher. I, you know, um, they're people that I've had gotten to know before uh, signing, kind of done some, some due diligence on them and um, uh, really liked everything I saw, just found some wonderful people there, people who were willing to help me along the way. And uh, it's just been a great fit. Uh, it really has. And, and that's one thing I would encourage all aspiring novelists to, to find, uh, you know, at first, we're just looking for someone to to publish our, our books, but finding the right fit is is such is so important. You really have to uh, to find people who you can work with and and who appreciate what you bring to the table and who you know want to help you tell your story. Uh, so that would be something I would uh, that, that 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 I had to learn and, and that I didn't know going in. Yeah, no, really, really great point, especially when you commit to writing a novel that you put so much time and effort into. You want to make sure that you are sharing it with someone who is a good fit and who can help you make your dreams come true. And Wild Ink is fantastic. I've heard nothing but fantastic things about them. You and I are both being published in one of their anthologies, too. So I've gotten to know the Wild Ink family a little bit as well. And I think you bring up a really great point, too make sure you're with the right fit for you. And that goes for authors who are pursuing traditional publishing with agent representation, or if you're going with a small press, it's the same process. Whenever you potentially have an offer from someone, it's important to learn as much as possible about them, talk to current clients and others in the business who may know them just to get a good feel for who you will be working with. So now let's shift gears into chatting about committing to writing a novel. So there are so many people who say they want to write a book. Many people start writing a book, but there's very small percentage of authors who actually finish writing a first draft. So why do you think there are so many authors who have this dream of writing a book, but actually can't commit to writing the whole thing? What are some things coming to mind? Well, I think there are multiple issues, multiple roadblocks that that we all face and that stumble you know a, a lot of, a lot of uh, of writers who would like to, to write a, a, a novel core time management skills that that's a big one that was a big one for me a lack of organizational skills uh, you know sort of a related point uh, some people need more organization than others I'm one of those people I um, 
found that that I just had to have a, a more organized approach to writing. Um, and 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 a third problem is is a lack of a support system. Um, that's one thing that has truly benefited me is in in having other writers to to bounce ideas off of and to uh, offer practical advice on one hand, but also that that just emotional support that that we all need, particularly when um, you know you're having a tough day or the words aren't coming right or when you're in the the, the, the pitching and querying process where, you know, you're getting those rejections that we all get, um, you know, that you, you need to have people who will, will boost your confidence and, uh, and, and, in a, a meaningful, productive way. And, uh, so those are just, those are three of the, um, the issues I see. And I, I've, I've dealt with all three of them on my, uh, lengthy, uh, writing path. Yeah, no, fantastic. I agree with all of those. And I also, to have really good time management skills where I'm able to manage my time with everything else I'm doing to commit time to writing my book. Also, I'm big with organization too and planning ahead, researching, and outlining. That really helps me a lot. And the support system, I truly believe that one of the number one things you need in order to find success as an author to have that support system because when things get difficult it's really great to have friends to lean on who understand what you're going through and I realized that I was in a bit of a better position maybe than some because I wrote my first two books when I was in my MFA in writing public fiction program at Seton Hill University and so I was surrounded by authors all the time I have my mentors I have my critique partners but not everyone has that and I'm completely aware of that so there are other ways to find writing friends on social media at conferences if you have local book clubs things like that just any place you can look to find that support system and your family and other friends as well and a few other things I wanted to add is that I think one of the other roadblocks that authors can face is this fear of not being ready or not being good enough. I do have a master's degree, but I'm still learning every day and I'm still being given instructions by my agent to fix certain things in my manuscript that never occurred to me before. And so I think it's a constant learning process. So the best way to start to learn is to actively do it. And so finding a way to push through that block of, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to just get the words down. And then you can go back and polish and revise and learn more about the craft as you go. And another point I wanted to mention is that writing a novel is very big of a task. And so for us too, with the organization, I think looking at it in smaller chunks instead of thinking oh my goodness I need to write this entire book think of it in terms of number of chapters if you have an outline or if you don't outline in your pants so just think of it as I'm going to take this one step at a time I'm going to maybe set word count goals or have a structure to my writing that lets me dedicate time to writing a chapter a day or a few chapters a week if you look at it in a more smaller scale you're not going to be as daunted by the fact that you have this massive project ahead of you. You are so right about those two <laughs> points, and uh, amen to both of those. And actually, I'll, I'll give you some examples from my own writing journey. Uh, my successful attempt to finish a novel in 2023 is actually my fourth attempt to write one. And I, and uh, in those first three attempts, those issues you bring up were were huge problems. My the first time I tried to write a novel. I was a freshman in college, and um, I struggled with the the notion that I just wasn't ready. And and to be honest, I, you know, there's there was probably some truth to that, uh, you know. And that's not to say that young people should not, you know, write or should not try to write novels. Absolutely, they can. But um, I think I would have personally benefited from honing my craft on short fiction a little more than I did before I tried to make the jump into writing a full-fledged novel. That's something, you know, I've found that, that writing short fiction has, has really it just improved everything about what I do, and I bring those skills over to, to writing, you know, longer, longer works uh, now. Um, the second time, I had just started my first real job. This was my second attempt at, at writing a novel, and my writing was a lot better by that point, but um, 
I just didn't have the organizational skills I, I, I needed to do the things that, that you said about breaking it up into chapters, taking it one small bite at a time. I, I, I found the whole process overwhelming. That's why I, I quit for a second time. And I was in my, you know, early 20s at that point. Um, and then the third attempt, life kind of got in the way on this one. My son was a toddler then. I had a lot going on in my career and in my, you know, my real job. Um, I'd written a fiction book a few years earlier, as well as a graphic novel. So I had, you know, so I, I had a fair amount of, you know, writing experience by that point. And my, my day job is also writing related. So, um, you know, I think I had the technical skills then, but I just was still wasn't organized enough and didn't know how to, how to properly manage my time in order to get a long-term project done like writing a novel. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. I completely resonated with your point about short fiction and how it can really help you develop your craft because whenever you're writing a short story, you need to tell a story effectively and in a compelling way in less words than a novel. And I found by writing short stories in my MFA program when I did like residencies and just as an undergrad too, it really helped me to understand, okay, what characters are absolutely necessary? Is this phrase here absolutely necessary or does do the readers understand what's going on without this telling piece here is this backstory necessary just like really getting into the craft and realizing what makes the book compelling or the story compelling in the short story case and making sure every single word on the page matters and that is driving the plot forward and developing characterization and setting and all of that and so I think writing short stories is a really great way to better understand the craft at a smaller scale because if you aren't as is knowledgeable about the craft and you dive right into a book I could not imagine I cannot really truly imagine writing a book without having some kind of experience with writing fiction and also too I want to point out that there are so many ways to develop your craft if you don't have a formal education you can definitely read craft books I read craft books all the time there are so many great ones on different areas of the craft maybe you struggle with setting descriptions there is a wonderful craft book i read the author's name is slipping my mind currently but it's called writing active setting fantastic book so there are books out there that can help you develop different areas without having to go for a formal education and you can also do like conferences that have workshops and attend like online courses that are more bite-sized so there are options available but the best way I found to learn craft and to better understand the structure of books is to read. Reading as much as you possibly can is giving you hands-on experience with immersing yourself in all of these different story worlds by being very observant of what you're reading, what is the author doing that is working, and finding ways to pull what you're learning as a reader into your work as an author. Absolutely, yeah. I, and, and that's one thing. I've always been an avid reader and um, I, I would, you know, certainly encourage other people to, to read, you know, not just in their preferred genre, but in, um, in multiple genres, um, because there's so much you can learn. Uh, I've actually, uh, had the, uh, the, uh, the honor recently of reading a couple of, of rom-com books that, that some author friends of mine have, have written, uh, and uh, 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 Diane Billis and uh, Dana Hawkins, who are who have, who are two great uh, rom com writers, who uh, I have uh, read their books recently, and uh, I've noticed like there are a lot of things I can learn from them in terms of like snappy dialogue and in 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 that genre. And I'm like you know I I could I could bring that to you know, what I do in, in, in the more heroic fiction uh, realm. So um, there, there are always uh, things you can learn from reading other people's works. Um, and um, it reminds me of a quote, and, and, and I can't, I'm not going to be able to, to quote it verbatim, but the British author Alan Moore said something like, it's good to read... Um, not only great works, but also less than great works, because it gives you the sense that 
hey, I can do this too. You know, it, it builds, you know, like, you know, if you, if you read something that, that isn't a masterpiece, but it's still something you enjoy, you're like, hey, I can, you know, that's something I can aspire to, you know, it, it, and, um, and I, I've found that to be the case as well. Right. Absolutely. And that leans into the subjectivity, too, because if you think that wasn't a masterpiece or somebody else, you may say that's their favorite book. And so when you commit to writing a novel, I think it's really great just to recognize that you know yourself as an author, you know your target audience, and that's all that really matters when you're diving into writing that book. You don't need to please every reader because not a single author has pleased every single reader who picked up their book. So now another point I wanted to chat about is with the deadlines. So we talked about organization a little and time management and having a writing schedule, maybe outlining, or at least having some kind of plan diving into your story if you're a pantser and some goals to hit along the way. But deadlines are a huge part of being a writer, whether you are just setting personal deadlines to hit to get your book done, or maybe you are under contract and have to hit deadlines. So it's a big part of writing and it can definitely play a role in helping you to finish that book. So Bruce, what are your thoughts on deadlines? Well, I personally find deadlines very helpful. Um, before uh, I, I spent a number of years as a newspaper reporter and uh, before my current uh, job in uh, corporate communications, so we were under very tight daily deadlines, and that really helped me develop some skills that have translated well to writing fiction, because um, the ability to set a deadline and then meet it, well, you know, that, that, that is something that, that benefits you in, no matter what, what you're writing. I, my approach is, when I wrote The Blacksmith's Boy, I had a, an overarching deadline of I wanted to have my manuscript done by the end of the year. And I actually got motivated and finished it by late August. Um, But within that, I also set sub deadlines of I want to have this chapter done by X date. I want to have this section complete, you know, in 30 days or or whatever it, it is. So sort of like you were talking about earlier, breaking uh, a a writing project up up into chapters. I think if you set smaller deadlines within a larger deadline, that can really help you uh, meet that that overall goal. It it makes it seem smaller and more manageable. In fact, I would, I I have sort of a a daily uh, goal of, I want to write 20 minutes every day uninterrupted turn off the phone, don't watch TV, et cetera. That's not to say I don't write more on certain days, but I, I, I every day have a, you know, a minimum focus of 20, of a 20 minute sprint every day. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I always try to make time for that. Now, the other thing I will say about deadlines is sometimes I see my fellow authors really beat themselves up if they miss a deadline, a self-imposed one, that is. And I would say don't do don't do that. I mean, yes, please do set deadlines because it will help you. But if you aim for five thousand words this week and you get four thousand, that's okay. Um, you know, they're meant to be a tool to move you toward an end goal, not the end in and of itself. So. Um, that would that that's that's my approach on 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 deadlines very helpful but you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't let them control um you know what you do as a writer yeah no i love that so much and i agree with all the points you made i'm also a kind of person who sets an overarching deadline and smaller ones in between because I don't write every day and it's fantastic that you do the sprints every day if you can and there are some authors that live by like the law of writing every day I've never been that person Um, I'm always trying as hard as possible to write as much as possible but writing every day just isn't realistic sometimes um I we all have different things going on in our Mm -hmm. lives I'm a freelance editor I have a music career so I I have a lot of things sometimes I'm in the studio for 10 hours and I can't come home after that and write so I think that (laughs) yeah (laughs) so I think what's really nice about this is 
for me personally, if I have a deadline, okay, I'm getting this revision done in two weeks, then mm-hmm. I can look at my schedule and go, okay, these are the days that I can dedicate a lot of time to it. This day may me not. And so what I do is I really tailor my writing on the days I can write to getting a certain amount done. Whereas the days that I can't write so much, I am perfectly fine with that because I'm still working toward my overarching deadline. And so this goes back to knowing yourself as an author, how much you can write at a time, the days that you can write, maybe you are an author that writes every day, but just knowing yourself in your own writing process really helps because I think to like recognizing how quickly you can do things. For example, I did NaNoWriMo twice and I wrote an entire draft in November. It was like 73,000 words, both of them. And I did write every day when I did NaNoWriMo because I had to, but I found by doing that, I was white by the end of it. Like I was Mm -hmm. like, I can't do this by choice, like all the time. I really enjoy doing competitions like that. So I'm always down to do that. But I realized that it wasn't realistic for me to do that all the time. And so I found out about myself that I can write every day if I had to, but it resulted in burnout and burnout also isn't good. And especially right. when you are just writing and you set a deadline, if you set it too soon and you're always burned out, that's definitely going to halt your progress and maybe contribute to you giving up on writing the rest of the book because you are burned out. So being aware of that is really important as well. Absolutely. You know, deadline should, you know, this should be sustainable. This should be something that that doesn't burn you out uh, the way you're talking about. And and also, let's let's remember, I mean, writing is supposed to be something you, you find it enjoyable. And, right, absolutely. And, <laughs> and, and fun. It, 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 you know, we want to get these projects done, but, you know, it, it shouldn't be, it, they're not, they shouldn't be burdens. You know, this should be something you do because you really enjoy doing it. And if you find that you're not enjoying it, maybe, you know, you need to, to take a step back and, and, and relax those deadlines and the pressure you're putting on yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So as we are writing our books, we always hit points, at least I do, where I get to a point, like I have my momentum going, then I hit a point, I'm like, oh gosh, like, I don't know if I can keep going. Like, I kind of lack motivation a little bit, especially in places toward the middle. And then at the end, it's a big one for me because I always have this fear that I'm not going to do the story justice. And so I procrastinate right in the (laughs) ending. So for you, when authors are lacking that push in certain parts of the story, what advice do you have? My advice and and what I would do and what I did when I was, I was writing, uh, my first novel, I found something else to do during those moments when I didn't have motivation. And, you know, I, I tried not to spend too long on them, but, you know, maybe, you know, the, certainly what you're saying about the ending, that, that that's one that it took me a little while to get around to it because I wanted to absolutely get it the way I wanted it. So what I did instead, I went back to some earlier chapters and I, I revised, I, um, you know, tweak some dialogue, move some things around, uh, things that I was going to do later, but I went back and and did those things to sort of recharge my batteries a little bit, um, in preparation for writing that ending. Um, you know, some people I know even will move on to other projects. They'll, um, you know, they might, uh, take a week off from their, their novel manuscript and work on a short story or, you know, do some um, do some marketing activities uh, to promote their their writing career. Or, you know, maybe um, you know write some some blog posts or or something like that. So, you know, I, I think it's okay to to take a break. Not necessarily write, uh, you know, in a linear fashion. You can you know you can jump around if you're not feeling a particular section of your 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 novel at that point and then come back to it when you do feel completely motivated to do it. Yeah, no, you said so many things I resonate with. First of all, I'm definitely a revised as I go person. Some people aren't. Every single time I'm drafting and I finish a chapter, when I sit down to write the next chapter or the next day or whatever, I 
go back and I reread the previous chapter, make any tweaks mm-hmm. because I'm the kind of person that if there's even the slightest inconsistency, I cannot focus. I'm always thinking like, oh, I got to go back and fix this. And then if there's so <laughs> many things, yes. it gets really overwhelming and then I get confused with like what I'm actually trying to do. So I've always made it a rule for myself to revise as I go. But I really like the other point you said about maybe going to a different project, recharging your batteries in whatever way you can, and sometimes jumping around. I did this once during NaNoWriMo. I got to a chapter and I realized I had a full chapter by chapter outline, but I realized when I got to it that there wasn't as much in that chapter as I initially thought there would be. And so I was really stuck of what to add. But instead of me sitting there for days when I literally was pushing to get the book done by November 30th, I was like, okay, I'm going to skip this because I had the chapter by chapter outline. And that's the beauty of that. If you know where you're going to be writing and what comes next, you can skip and come back to it without things being off a lot. But if you're a pantser, maybe you have a scene in your head that comes later that you're motivated to write. But regardless, I think that skipping and coming back is a good idea. So you're not stalling. You can keep making forward progress, but come back to whatever chapter you were stuck on whenever you fill the hole that you needed to fill. That's right. And, and your point about forward progress is, is a good one because, you know, when, when I did those things, when I, when I would go back and work on something earlier in the book, I, I always felt like I was doing something positive that was, you know, making a, a overall progress toward getting my, my book finished or, you know, making myself a better writer. Um, you know, I felt like it was productive work. It just maybe wasn't the 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 uh, the big pressing need that uh, that I didn't quite feel like doing at that moment. But you know, you, you can take it one bite at a time. You yeah. can, uh, you know, you don't you don't ha- you know if you're not if you're not feeling uh, a particular scene, then you know there's there are so many other things you can do. Yeah. Uh, and one thing I've I've found that if you just have like a uh, even a, an hour in a day or, or, or something or uh, to uh, recharge your batteries um, and then come back to your big project the next day. And that is uh, micro fiction or flash fiction. Um, you know, there are so many publications now that, that accept 100 word stories or 250 word stories, uh, things like that. And, and I've had a lot of fun with those. Um, I, I've started writing uh, some micro fiction and, uh, I just did a little piece yesterday, uh, as a matter of fact. Um, and I really find those are rewarding because you can get a complete story in one sitting, you know, and, and, and it really helps you with things like word choice and, and, you know, really writing lean and maximizing, uh, the impact of each word. And, you know, it's something, you know, what, what you, you know, you can just dash it off and then, uh, you know, and then you're done with it. So uh, I, I would encourage people if, if they're interested to uh, to give microfiction a, a try as a as an exercise. Yeah, absolutely. And just tying back real quick to the forward progress point you made, I think that it's really important to remember as authors that whenever you're doing something related to your book, you are making forward progress. I'm the kind of person who, if I'm like going to be writing a very tense scene, I will literally imagine it to the point I'm playing a movie in my head to the point when when I sit down to write, it just pours out. I consider that to be working on my novel because I'm I'm thinking about it. I'm imagining the dialogue and the setting and everything. If you need to do research for something in your book, that's forward progress. You're learning more about your story and information you need to write it. If you're revising, parse as you go, that is forward progress. So I think sometimes we can get caught up in the fact that only forward progress is writing new words for a new chapter, but I don't think that's always the case if you're working on your novel in some way that is forward progress. So just to wrap things up here, one Whenever we push through everything, we have our time management, we have the organization and the deadlines and the motivation, and we finally reach the end and we write the end. It's so rewarding and so fun and fantastic. Every single time I get to the end, I feel so proud of myself. And I think the point to make here is that sometimes as authors, we can have our attention set on the publishing deal or signing with an agent and 
doing the book signings and all of that, which is fantastic to have the goals. But I think oftentimes, I know I do this too, I forget to really just reflect on the fact I wrote an entire book and that is a massive accomplishment. So whenever you get to the end and you write those two little words, just make sure to take time to celebrate your accomplishment. Totally agree. That is that is quite an achievement and anyone who, who has ever done it should, should feel a sense of pride. I, uh, I, yeah. And, and, and I'm all about celebrating the wins when they come. Um, you know, it, it's easy to, to think about what, you know, could be down the road or, or, but, you know, in, in writing, anytime something positive happens, you know, I, I've, I've learned that it's, so, you know, that, that you should celebrate the moment. And, um, and, and I certainly did when I finished my manuscript back in August of uh, 2023. That was, uh, that was a pretty, pretty good day for me. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Well, this has been such a fabulous chat full of inspiration and tips and much more. And it was a joy having you on the show. And this brings us to the plot twist. Are you ready? I'm ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> so your question is, what is a genre that you have never written that you could see yourself writing in the future? Ooh, uh, wow, that's a that's a good one. I, I think I have an answer though. I've, I've I've dabbled in quite a bit of short fiction, uh, in, in sci-fi, fantasy, horror, but one thing I've never really tried is western. Ooh. And I, you know. There's just something about the Western genre that lends itself to the stories of, you know, heroes versus villains that uh, that I've always been drawn to. And, uh, you know, I, I think I might have a story in me at some point. I don't know what that is yet, but uh, I'd like to give that a try at some point. Awesome. That's fabulous. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Can you please share with everybody where they can connect with you online? Uh, absolutely. I'm on Twitter at B. Buchanan Womble, B. B. U. C. H. A. N. A. N. W. O. M. B. L. E. And on uh, Instagram, I am uh, B. Buchanan seven seven ten. So uh, and uh, and then I've got a page up at the uh, the Wild Ink uh, website at Wild Ink Publishing website, and uh, I am uh, working on an author website and uh, hope to have that launched here in the next uh, little bit. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And listeners, that is a wrap on this chapter with Bruce on committing to writing a novel. If you enjoyed our conversation, please consider leaving Literary Blend a review and giving it five stars to help others just like you discover it. Also, if you have friends in the publishing industry you think would enjoy the show, please pass it along to them. Thank you for listening. And until we flip to the next chapter, happy reading and writing.